great to be with you all and learning with you. I'm just going to set up a, a slide as we get underway with our presentation uh, on the Rosicrucian Dictionary. But first, we'll do a meditation. We'll actually have an experience of many of the words and the concepts in the Rosicrucian Dictionary because the Rosicrucians are very practical and the mysticism emphasizes the direct experience of, uh, of the one. And, of, and this, this meditation is a key for achieving that and let that soak in and be a way of life uh, through our daily living. So I think now you're seeing a uh, inspiring work of art uh, entitled Peace on Earth to People of Goodwill by the inspired Rosicrucian artist, Nucomendes Gomez. It's actually a uh, um, mixed media work ocean pan on border panel. And it's about 152 centimeters by 120 centimeters. And he did it in 1967. You notice in it a lot of different symbolism. Uh, much of it's actually covered in the Rosicrucian uh, dictionary. We're going to ascend up into the cosmic. And we'll even uh, talk about the definition of the word cosmic, because the Rosicrucian use it in a specialized uh, way. You notice the dove descending as well. And you'll notice various other powerful beams of light and radiations of well-being. And lower down, you'll see the Earth, but also the trials and struggles and wonderful experiences we have on Earth as a special temple for our learning to be able to rise into the cosmic and achieve our mission and purpose in life and be one with the one, as the renowned traditional Rosicrucian Plotinus uh, used to say. At this time, I invite you to uh, <clears throat> Prepare for meditation. Still take in the image of an inspiring nature because in a way it's a map or a sign of what we will do in our meditation to rise up from earth into the cosmic. But by the law of correspondence, we'll go deeply within ourselves at the same time. I invite you now to close your eyes and just let go of the cares of the day. Just take some deep neutral breaths. And by neutral breaths, Rosicrucians mean neither holding the inhalation or holding the exhalation. And with the air coming in is what the Rosicrucians refer to as the vital life force, or as an acronym, the VLF, also described as the cosmic essence. And with that, that invigorates our body and helps heal it. It also helps us attune with the divine within. Breathing is a surprisingly simple act, but a very profound one. Just enjoy the rhythm of the breath. The Rosicrucians use the term cosmic keyboard, which is also described in the Rosicrucian dictionary to mean if you can think of a keyboard extending up into higher and higher octaves. As we breathe in inwards and outwards, we attune ourselves with higher and higher corresponding rates of vibrations in the higher octaves. And we do it with a spiritual purpose. So we spiritualize this act. Make it all the more meaningful. All the more connected with all others. Rosicrucians use the term soul with a capital S to mean the one soul that connects us all like a system of lights together through one wiring system. So just continue to enjoy the rhythms of your breath in the temple of the Holy Master, which houses the divine within us. We're going to perform a meditation exercise of the little Rosicrucians that's described in the booklet Lieber 777. And later, Karen will post in the chat uh, resources for it and other resources for this presentation towards the end of this presentation. And we're soon going to begin our ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum to further attune with the divine within and with the all. 
prepare ourselves to do a prayer of invocation. I invite you to join with me in saying either inwardly or outwardly in a vocative manner. May the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may enter the celestial sanctum and attune in pureness and worthiness. So be it in truth, so mote it be. Now let us begin our descent, our ascent high up above the room where we are, above the home where we're dwelling or the geographic location. Look down where you were, Feel the exhilaration already of the ascent and even that life force in your body being intensified. It's our birthright to experience these things. They're always with us. It's a matter of us re realizing them. And as you rise up, go up over the town or the city where you dwell, the metropolis. See all its system and order and radiate love and well being down to all sentient beings below and keep rising up higher and higher, faster and faster. You see the province or state where you live. You can see the weather systems and the water systems, maybe mountains or plains, the greenery, various colors, inspiring beauty of the earth. Don't be passive now, use great inner strength to rise up faster and faster. Use your spiritual fortitude to rise up higher and higher. See the great nation where you live. Take it in and see then the northern or southern hemisphere where you live and the continent where you dwell. And then ultimately come up higher so you can see the beautiful blue jewel of the earth, the temple of the earth, corresponding to the temple of our body corresponding to the temples that are built on earth. And let's keep rising up higher and higher in this beautiful interconnected system of the cosmos. The Rosicrucians refer to this cosmic, as the divine intelligence back of the universe and all the natural and spiritual laws. As we rise higher and higher and faster and faster, now take in the solar system. You see the fiery ball of the sun and the various beautiful planets revolving about it. You see the great rings of Saturn and the huge planet of Jupiter, Mercury and Mars, and their subtle influences on us. And keep going higher, faster and faster and start to take in other stellar phenomena in addition to the sun. You see quasars and pulsars supernovae, white dwarfs and red giants, black holes and their important function in keeping the universe in balance. Start to see now as you rise up faster and faster, the great system and order of the universe. It's awe-inspiring in its colors. Hear the music of the spheres spoken of since ancient times, exhilarating your being. Start to take in the size and structure of the Milky Way galaxy, the great spiraling galaxy where we live. Sense its great spiraling action about its center. And rise right out of the Milky Way galaxy and look back at its beautiful spiraling design. Just as it rotates about its center. So our earth rotates about the sun and the earth rotates revolves as well about its axis, all these interconnected actions. And look up and see other spiraling galaxies and other galaxies of other forms and shapes and their beautiful and wondrous colors and constructions, handiworks of the creator. And see nebulae rise up faster and faster, straight up, far faster than the speed of light. We're transcending space and time now. So we're not limited by the laws of physics. 
keep going faster and faster. Continue to enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent. Now to start to take in not only myriad stars and nebulae and galaxies, but also what's referred to as super clusters of galaxies, many cl galaxies gathered together. Sense the vastness, which in a way may feel the outer self to be small, but it can also exhilarate and draw forth the inner nature to inspire both us inwardly and outwardly. Keep rising up faster and faster. Take in the beauty of it all. It's a stupendous harmony and order. Start to sense too that the universe itself is revolving about a great cosmic axis spoken of by mystics since ancient times. We have a great axis within the temple of our body. It's our spine. And by the law of correspondence, as above, so below, this great axis of the cosmos and universe corresponds to our cosmos, our mini cosmos, the microcosm. All the natural and spiritual laws within us are mirrored about us. We learn about these things by looking outwardly and inwardly through our Rosicrucian studies. And as you speed faster and faster through the cosmos, start to zoom in on the great axis itself about which the universe is revolving. Sense the stupendous harmony and dynamic motion of the universe revolving about a great axis. You zoom in on the very midpoint of that axis. You can slow up as you reach it. There at that center, of the cosmos at the center of our being. For as we've made this great ascent, we've also made a great descent within ourselves to the very heart of our being, our still center. And at the center of the cosmic axis, visualize what the Rosicrucians refer to as our celestial sanctum. You may wish to see it as an inspiring place in nature, maybe by a meadow near the waters running beautiful ecosystem and harmony, or maybe you're on the high bank of an ocean or a great lake and see spread out before you the suggestion of infinity through all the waves actions. See the beauty of the sounds and the colors and the smells. However you wish to visualize your celestial sanctum, it may be as an inspiring temple, such as a cathedral or a church. There's a Buddha stupa or a Hindu mandir or a Jewish, Jewish synagogue, or a Sikh Gurdwara, however you wish to visualize your inspiring place, think of it now. I know some of you like to visualize the Grand Temple of the Rosicrucian Order Amor in San Jose, California. Fill in the sights and sounds of the various senses, make it real before you at the center of your being, at the center of the cosmos. Maybe an inspiring ceremony going on at the temple where you are, possibly a con mystical convocation of the Rosicrucians with our chief executive officer, the Imperator, conducting it. You may see beautiful stained glass window or wondrous sense of incense quickening your inner consciousness. Fill in the details. Make it real. Make it exhilarating make it rejuvenating or in this act you are healing yourself helping make yourself whole and when you filled it in well and feel the exhilaration of this great location just dwell in stillness you may wish to just concentrate on the great rhythm of your breath it resonates with the great energies of the cosmos just dwell at the center of your being in profound peace. Or as Rosicrucians say, peace profound. Let us dwell now, fratters and sores and participants, in stillness and quietude for a period.
you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently, bring it back to the breath at the center of your being, at the center of the cosmos. Rosicrucians have a special term for what we're doing now, referred to as worship. What it means is to dwell in attunement with the God of our heart or with the divine within. True worship takes place within our inner sanctum. Just continue to dwell in the deep silence, the rhythmic breath. Just feel whatever there is to feel. Meditation is a profound act of non-avoidance. Any things and impressions come forward, note them but return to the rhythmic breath. Take this time as a mini retreat to be recharged, all the more able to discharge your daily duties, all the more capable to compassionately be with others and interact with others and be at one with all. Now, while we're applying the law of cosmic attunement, let us also apply the law of service. Let us enter into the work, of what the Rosicrucians refer to as the silent council in conjunction with the council of solace, the grand lodge, of the Rosicrucian order, this jurisdiction or in your jurisdiction. Council of Solace receives petitions from persons who wish well-being and healing directed towards them. And we can participate in this selfless service by radiating love and well-being now at the heights of the celestial sanctum. This will be an act of what the Rosicrucians refer to as work, but in its spiritualized form. In the center of your being, radiate love and well-being out to all those who petition the Council of Solace of the Grand Lodge. And you can include in also all those persons that you know who are in need and all those frontline health workers and indeed all those sentient beings throughout the cosmos that are in need of healing to make whole at this time. Radiate from your heart and your head love and well-being. Just like when we rose up with great inner force, use temporarily a great inner force to radiate love and well-being out from you. 
like a supernova or a great searchlight beaming out light or like a lighthouse sending it out its light for miles around. Radiate this light out of love and well-being to all those in need that we so described. Feel it flow out from yourself. Feel an exhilaration as it flows out from yourself. This is one of the most meaningful, important things we can do in our life is to radiate love and well-being to others. And as this happens, we receive a degree of this influx for our own health and well-being without intending it. At a certain point, I think you'll find the radiations of love and well-being seem freed up or move faster. And you know that they're being received by those in need. For there's a great need for this type of healing being directed. At a certain point too, I think you'll find that you will not have to consciously radiate the love and well-being. It continues on its own without conscious effort. When that occurs, just continue to dwell in peace profound as the love and well-being radiates out from you. Just continue to follow the rhythmic breath at the deep still center of your being. Our connection with the cosmic and the divine mind. You may wish now to, just as you radiated a love and well-being out throughout the cosmos, just let your mind expand out to encompass the entirety of the cosmos, the entirety of the cosmic, and enter into what Rosicrucians refer to as the consciousness of the cosmic or cosmic consciousness. Be the cosmic mind, assume the cosmic mind, experience as the cosmic mind experiences now. Now, providers and sorrows and participants will formally conclude this period of the work of the Silent Council in conjunction with the Council of Souls, but we'll not close our meditation yet. But in regard to this act of service of radiant love and well being, we'll say, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done. So be it in truth, so mote it be. But continue to dwell, peace profound, assuming and being the cosmic mind assured that the radiations of love and well-being will continue at all times as a way of life for us in service. So just continue to dwell a while longer, the center of your being.
the still center, experiencing as the cosmic mind experiences. I think this period of meditation and this and, and work with the silent council leave you with a feeling of a wonderful tonic effect of healing for oneself, making whole. Also the exhilaration of expanded consciousness, which is of our true nature and who we truly are all along. It's a matter of increasingly realizing it, applying it in our lives. Soon we'll begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. We'll formally close this period of meditation shortly, but the effects of the meditation and the meditative state will continue on with us at all times, especially when we practice this regularly each day. Now with a prayer of gratitude on our lips for all those who taught us and show us the higher way of living, for this opportunity to be of service, to attune with the cosmic as our birthright. Let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Moving faster and faster, past the myriad super clusters, still sensing the great revolving action of the universe, going by myriad stellar phenomena, quasars and pulsars, Seeing nebulae in various galaxies, some spiraling and some in other forms. Gradually you see in the distance the Milky Way galaxy, our great home. Speed quickly towards it. Do so with ease. Go back into the great arm where we live. Past myriad stars, other phenomena. See in the distance our solar system great fiery ball of the sun and the various planets revolving about it and see our beautiful blue jewel of the earth, our home and special temple. And come back to the hemisphere where you dwell on earth and the continent. And then the country, province or state, the city or geographic area where you dwelling on earth. See your home, come inside it to the room where you left off. Before we open our eyes, we can say together, may the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So be it in truth, so mote it be. And feel yourself in your chair or how you're situated. And when you're ready, you may wish to stretch and open your eyes all the more ready for the work and worship of the Rosicrucians this day. Thank you. Okay, we'll give our, in our presentation on the Rosicrucian Dictionary. Now, a helpful companion in the Rosicrucian studies is the Rosicrucian Manual. And we will consider a key part of the manual, namely the Rosicrucian Dictionary. 
It's regular reading is a valuable way to review the comprehensive weekly lessons of the Rosicrucian order Amarc. Now the Rosicrucian dictionary is in various editions of the Rosicrucian manual. In the chat later, Karen will post an online version of the Rosicrucian manual, which includes the Rosicrucian dictionary. Though I know many of you already have the Rosicrucian uh, dictionary in your library at home, or some of you also have what's called the Rosicrucian glossary. It's a uh, booklet that is very similar to the Rosicrucian dictionary. Now, one would wonder, well, why do the Rosicrucian have these specialized terms? Well, I think you'll found in various subject areas and disciplines that you studied that there are specialized terms. Similarly, the Rosicrucian studies have their specialized terms that make for clear and efficient communication if one knows the meanings. If one has studied for mathematics, for, for example, there's lots of words there that have a general use, but they have a specialized use in mathematics. And they allow communication of the subject of mathematics, but you'll find that in physics as well. For example, in physics, there's the term weight, but it, the weight means something different than the general English language. Weight is a force. And it's actually associated with the work of the traditional Rosicrucian, Sir Isaac Newton. Because weight as a force is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. But in general English language, we use the word weight uh, synonymous with what with mass uh, or what would be in physics, um, just the word mass. These terms I know um, for someone who hasn't done the studies um, can be confusing, but that's why there's value in engaging in the studies, seeing their inspiring conception, which I will show you as we go through some of the definitions in the Rosicrucian dictionary. And they also help clarify communication and make it simpler. Um, now I'm going to show you a selection of some of the words in the Rosicrucian dictionary uh, that uh, may be of special uh, interest to you. One of the very important words of the Rosicrucian dictionary and of the Rosicrucian system of study is the word cosmic and we've used it already. I'll read the, uh, the definition here. And cosmic is used as both a noun and an adjective to mean the universe as a harmonious relation of all natural and spiritual laws. It is the divine infinite intelligence of the supreme being permeating everything. It is not a place, but a state or condition of order and regulation. The cosmic is the totality of the laws and phenomena which manifest in the human and nature. The forces, energies, and powers which account for the finite and infinite worlds. It is therefore a unity, the particulars of which the human experiences are but expressions. Now there's a great deal conveyed in this definition. And with one's own studies of spirituality and mysticism, by mysticism, I mean the direct experience of the divine, the direct experience of what is the art and science of love. That this suggests many things um, it speaks volumes in a way and brings back at once, for example, doing the Rosicrucian studies is a helpful review just to look at this definition and get one back on track and the larger, more essential things in living. You notice that uh, the cosmic um, refers to cosmos, the Greek word, which means the universe is a system and order. And we applied all these things when we went up and, and ascended to the heights of the celestial sanctum. We had not only experience these things conceptually, but we experience them firsthand in its experience, which is so important to be able to understand them pro these terms properly and how to apply them and convey them to others. Now it says we experience particulars. 
But as we expand our consciousness, we take in more and more of the cosmic, leading to the state of consciousness of the cosmic or cosmic consciousness. Also very inspiring about this definition is the totality of laws and phenomena, both within us as a microcosm, but also mirroring as a macrocosm. I wanna show you another definition, but it builds on the concept of the cosmic. It's a very symbolic expression and poetic and allegorical. It's the guardian of the threshold. It's a specialized term. It means your conscience, your inner self, the sent sentinel of the subconscious mind. And using the term sentinel or guardian in a poetic way, but also a figurative way. The subconscious works with symbols, so it helps. This is very conducive to our deeper understanding. Not only for the subjective mind, where we reason outwardly and take in sense impressions to the objective mind, but the subconscious mind. Ultimately, we move even deeper into the all-encompassing cosmic mind. Now we have the sentinel of the subconscious mind acting as your guide and protector. The guardian also stands at the threshold of the cosmic. See, we're you know what the word cosmic means now, so this term is meaningful to us, of the unseen, and is at the threshold of every soul, of every chamber of privacy, of every mind. Now, when we heed conscience, sometimes we may not know all the reasons, but it behooves us to heed the conscience because its guidance is infallible and invaluable. Sometimes we'll sense something deeply in the conscience that is right to do, and maybe a little surprise, but we'll find that later on we realize why we needed to act in the way conscience indicated. Or we may feel deeply within ourselves, it's not right to do that. Even though the outer nature has, has its heart set on that, it really wants to do that. Later on, we'll realize how much time and effort we were saved, or how much hardship we were saved ourselves or others by not proceeding in that fashion. Either way, we'll learn important lessons of life. We're here to learn. Now, important part about this guardian of the threshold is that we become more sensitive to it as we do meditation as we just did. Sometimes, you know, you hear the expression, oh, you're too sensitive. No, we're not too sensitive. How we act on being sensitive is more the issue. And being the conscience will allow us through meditation to be sensitive to it, that still small voice Within. It's part of mastership and living. By Rosicrucians referred to mastership to mean living in harmony with all levels of our being, from the physical through the spiritual, but also with other persons and with the environment. And we've got an important word later that will deal with that. But let us look at some more important words of the Rosicrucians. Now there's the words wisdom. And yes, this is a word that has its general use in the English language, but it has some special meanings for Rosicrucians as well. Wisdom here is defined as distinguished from knowledge. It is the understanding or the ability to apply knowledge. Knowledge is an accumulation of particular ideas, whereas wisdom is judgment in the exercise of the knowledge had. Wisdom may cause the rejection of certain previously acquired knowledge. Let me say a little bit more here about wisdom as the use of knowledge. It's in the sense of use as opposed to misuse. In other words, it has to do with the compassionate use of knowledge, not its misuse. And there's this wonderful progression in mysticism and maturing as a human being from belief to knowledge to wisdom. Belief does not entail responsibility. Wisdom very strongly entails responsibility, knowledge to some extent, but wisdom even more. To give you an example of that, uh, think of, for example, the beloved uh, Christmas story, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and think of the characters Ebenezer Scrooge and Jacob Marley. Those were two persons who had lots of worldly knowledge. They had great business acumen. They had a lot of intelligence in their subjective minds. But as Jacob Marley would say later to Ebenezer Scrooge, that humankind was their business. Their business was not to exact a golden idol in their hearts to just make money you know, and hoard it and cause harshness to others and take advantage of others by their accumulation and wealth. 
Ebenezer Scrooge resisted this inner wisdom. He resisted his conscience. And when we do that consistently, there's something very valuable happens to us as humans. We have a crisis. And the outer nature doesn't like really like the idea of hearing about a crisis. But if we embrace the crisis, um, it has a wonderful gift and lesson for us. Just like when we talked earlier about the Rosicrucian Creed for happiness, except the gift that each day has to us. However, if we heed our conscience on a daily basis, crises will not build up because we'll not ignore any facts that are important as the Rosicrucian Creed of Happiness uh, says in an earlier teleconference we discussed. Symbolically, um, Ebenezer Scrooge went through an initiation where three figures came to him and he didn't want to face what was being showed to him, but he had a major life review. In a way, if he had been practicing contemplation in his life, that is to um, communicate with that inner nature. When we meditate, we commune with that inner nature, but we draw things out more through contemplation. He finally realized when he spoke to others afterwards, including um, uh, one of the persons that worked for him, Bob Cratchit, um, you know, that he hasn't lost, he said, I haven't lost my senses, I've come to them. And he even mentions to another for forgiveness that he says, I had no eyes to see, no ears to hear all these years. These are profound statements of wisdom. You see here, there's this profound distinction between knowledge and wisdom. It's a gradual progression, but sometimes like with Scrooge, there's a great jump as if uh, into wisdom. You see, Scrooge had built up a lot of defenses because he didn't want to be hurt like he had been as a child. And so in a way we had this uh, very hurt child in an adult body causing a lot of harm. Um, he paid a severe price for that, not only in what he did for others, did to others, but also he was miserable and his life was largely meaningless. But as he followed through his, uh, on, to the wisdom, seeing the eyes to see, ears to hear finally, he found he had tremendous joy. All that suffering was transmuted in unspeakable well-being. His life became highly meaningful and he started to be of great service to others and use his business acumen to do well by others, not to burn every bridge he was crossing in social relations and experience peace profound. This is a helpful way to look at wisdom and that great transition from belief to knowledge to wisdom so that knowledge is applied in a way that is harmonious and to the well being of all others. This ties in with an important word of the Rosicrucian's work. And we made reference to it already, and we did participate in the work of the order when we did our meditation. Definition here is the work of the order consists of studying, testing, and teaching such laws of God and nature as will make our members masters in the holy temple, that's our physical body, and workers in the divine laboratory. That's the nature's domains. This enables us to render more efficient help to those who do not know and who need or require help and assistance. Each initiate has an obligation to serve, making it imperative to study and practice the laws taught in our order and to apply them at every opportune time. You see, there's very inspiring conceptions in here. The holy temple, we think of our body. That's a very meaningful way to look at ourselves. And it's a way that if we do that, the outer nature will be all the more attuned with the God within or the divine within, and thereby greatly enriched by the infinite resources. Think of nature's domain or the cosmos as a divine laboratory. As we rose up into the cosmic with our meditation and look about us, we have the temple of the cosmos, the temple of the divine about us, this stupendous harmony and order, the great creative work of the cosmic mind, which we are co-creators with in our own environment to apply and emulate these things. You notice that service is again emphasized and to do it at every opportune time. Now that can seem like a tall order to the outer self, but not to the outer self when it works with the master within. It's a way of life, extremely meaningful one. You note too that this, this expanded conception of work is not just what was done within the order, but that all, all that we do for the well being of others and ourselves. We spiritualize our work through having this more expanded, deeper understanding of the meaning of work. 
this, this conception of work is not as a chore, but as something that is ennobling, enriching, something that's our life purpose, central to our mission in life. It's closely tied in with another important concept, also in W. See, many of the words I've taken from are just the W sections in this dictionary. Imagine how much it conveys an understanding for the whole dictionary, especially when we read uh, with understanding. That other important word is worship. Worship is a process by which the soul personality, that's our inner spiritual nature that's evolving, of the human becomes consciously aware of its oneness with that of the divine. It gives us a realization of our part in the great scheme of all that is. Worship, never an end in itself, should be evidence of our desire to bring ourselves to a higher plane of realization of the ideal worshiped. Worship is essentially a process or condition which exists within the human, within us. While certain physical aids are valuable in creating a, a favorable environment, real worship must be carried on within the sanctum of our own being. Now, a very important term that combines work and worship is in fact work and worship that Rosicrucians refer to as key activities for Rosicrucians and humanities. You notice that the awareness of the oneness of the divine, that's worship. And this is never an end in itself. It needs to be applied in service. And crucially, within the sanctum of our own being, that's the crux and essence of worship. Built temples are to assist us, to lead us to this inner experience. But that's what's the crucial key. It'll lead us to that experience. What's actually going on when we experience awe in a temple or a sense of sacredness is we're actually getting that experience of that true worship, which is in the sanctum of our own being, that oneness with the master within that guides us, the divine within. Now to pull these things together as some examples of the inspiring conceptions and words in the Rosicrucian studies and the Rosicrucian manual and the Rosicrucian dictionary, is a very beautiful word, harmonium, that I've used sometimes. Um, it's a state of harmony. The metaphysical meaning when applied to the relationship of humans is unity of thought, agreement of purpose, the direct communion or kinship of souls, ideal of human relations. As applied to the relationship of the cosmic to the human soul, it means the state of ecstasy. When humans become conscious of attunement of the natural forces of their being with the absolute, or the source which they emanate. But in the individual, harmonia means or includes health, rhythm, coordination of action in all parts, plus the properly balanced relationship between the psychic and objective functionings. So you see, harmonium is a beautiful and encompassing concept, but also crucially, it's an experience. We become fully ourselves. We become one with the one. In a way, it's the, you take in the full range of vibrations of the cosmic keyboard. It's like a great pianist that can play the different octaves just as they're needed to have the harmonium um, with others that we live with, reside with, or on earth and throughout the cosmos, but also all the wonderful relationships within our body, all the flow of, of electricity or the flow of blood and so forth, all those systems working in harmony uh, like a form of music but also that ecstasy that we felt uh, when we ro rose up to the heights of the celestial sanctum, which is our birthright and something we can bring increasingly into our, into our life, just like a sponge absorbs water, we can bring in the, that, that divinity more and more expressed in our life. So ways of concluding before we have some uh, discussion, I will say that um, use the, we can use the Rosicrucian Dictionary in a variety of creative ways. For example, if you re review it regularly, the concepts and the way the definitions are worded is inspiring to us. It realigns us to the essential living. And we get the big peach picture to keep daily experiences in a helpful perspective and less, less anxious about living, but more enjoying, embracing life. Indeed, when we're facing an issue or a challenge in our life, you know, we can look over our Rosicrucian studies, 
look over the Rosicrucian dictionary for ideas and hints on how to resolve the issue and actually enjoy the resolution. It'd be an act of transmutation that take on these challenges and embrace them. They're part of maturing and growing and being stronger for oneself and others. And indeed, if you're ever given a presentation, whether it's a Rosicrucian presentation or not, I invite you to look over the dictionary for important concepts to mention that pertain to the topic of the presentation. And if it's not a Rosicrucian audience, you can still indirectly use these ideas and thoughts. But these terms will focus the audience, clarify for them what you're trying to uh, present and give it a much more deeper value that all will appreciate. So we've spoken today of the Rosicrucian Dictionary as a helpful companion for the Rosicrucian studies and the work of mysticism. Thank you.